Hey, what's up? Brendan Lyons here. In this video, we're gonna go through how to set up an ADR type template in Pro Tools. Um, this type of template really can be used for any kind of workflow, uh, recording ADR, recording voiceovers, doing remote overdubs. The principles are the same. I'm just gonna walk you through how to set up uh, some of the routing in Pro Tools so that you can work remotely and record somebody from their remote location into your studio. So uh, here we go. We've got Session Wire open on the right. I'm connected to my uh, good friend, Dan Smith, of course, as always. And on the left here, we've got a blank Pro Tool session. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna create a track that I can receive audio in from Session Wire. So we're gonna go track, new, stereo, aux. Now I like to use auxes for this um, type of situation. You can use audio channels. It really doesn't matter. Um, the aux just allows for the receive track to stay active all the time. So uh, I'm going to call it session wire HQ receive. There we go. Create. And on this aux, I'm going to place the session wire receive plugin. There we go. So uh, one more thing that we're going to do, I'm just going to change my output to uh, my DA conversion here. And we're going to test to make sure that we are indeed receiving Dan's voice here. So uh, we've got the plugin. I'm going to enable Dan's HQ audio stream here in Session Wire. And Dan is going to speak a little bit so we can test the stream here. So let's see if we can hear Dan. This is a sample voiceover being performed from a remote location and recorded locally. Okay, so as we saw, there was signal here in Session Wire but there's no signal coming into Pro Tools yet. And that is because I need to change this HQ audio destination on my side of the call to be the Session Wire receive plugin. And that means we're going to take the audio from Session Wire coming from here and we're going to route it to the receive plugin, therefore routing it to this aux in Pro Tools. So let's try that again. This is a sample voiceover being performed from a remote location and recorded locally. There we go. So now we've got Dan's voice coming into Pro Tools. Excellent, step one. Uh, now we have to figure out how to record Dan's voice. I typically like to do this. I'm gonna create uh, one new audio track. This is gonna be called Session Wire Record. And I'm gonna create a handful. You can create eight, you can create four, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna create a handful of playback tracks. And we'll see why I'm doing that in a second. Um, we're going to take this aux that has the Session Wire HQ receive plugin on it. I'll get rid of these uh, sends and inserts here. We don't need a couple of these. Uh, I'll flip that around. Um, we're going to take this aux and we're going to route it to this Session Wire record audio track that I've just played. So we'll take the output. We're going to go to track. We're going to select session wire record. Now this is going to automatically create a bus uh, to route the audio out to and bring it back into this audio track. So if we have Dan speak again, we're going to see the audio show up here and it's going to show up in these meters, but then it's going to go nowhere. And we'll see why in a second. This is a sample voiceover being so there performed he is. from a He's remote speaking. location. And, and we're not seeing it because we need to Input this arm is a sample or voiceover being performed from a remote location and recorded locally. We need to input arm it or uh, record arm this record track. So uh, in typical uh, Brendan's style, I like to make these session wire orange if I can. These two tracks will always be where we're receiving and recording audio coming from session wire. The rest of these, these playback tracks, we're going to take these and we're going to route them to a master fader. So we'll go one new stereo master fader and we'll call it master. I'll drag that to the end of my tracks here. And we're going to uh, change one thing. We're gonna change the output of this session wire record track to uh, my DA conversion again. And we're going to leave all of these playback so that it goes to this, this dine left, right. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter what it's called. Basically, it's a duplicate of my DA conversion. So we can have DA brackets one, we can have 
DA with no bracket one. And this master track over here is going to govern the output that we choose that is not the output of this record track. That is because we're going to put the session wire send plugin right here so that if I record somebody's performance into my session, I can immediately play that, that performance back to them through session wire and they can you know, uh, make some judgments uh, based on that performance. So let's check this out here. Uh, we'll try to clarify a couple things. So we're going to see Dan's voice come in this track, this aux right here that we've created. It's going to be recorded onto the session wire record track. And we're not going to see that signal flow out to this master fader because this master fader is governing these playback tracks and not these two over here. Okay, and again, that's because we've set these outputs to be different. The playback outputs go to the master fader. The session wire record output goes to the same physical outputs on my audio interface, but it's called something different. Um, and maybe we'll just grab a quick look in the IO window here. If we go to the bus tab, we'll be able to see all of these outputs and their mapping. So I've got a few that are routed to out one and two. I should probably clean up my IO menu. Uh, but if we scroll down, we can see I've got DA and then DA with a bracket and a one, probably further down here, no, even further. Uh, there it is, DA bracket and one. I need to clean up my IO window. Oops. Uh, here we go. Let's see what Dan sounds like again here. This is a sample voiceover being performed from a remote location and recorded locally. Okay. So let's flip over to our timeline. Again, we'll just kind of get rid of some of these that we don't need over here. We don't need any instruments. Um, so like I said, in the other view, we've got this record track. This is the only place we're going to be recording any of these takes. The only place. And after that, I'm going to drag them down to these playback tracks to play them back to uh, my talent. So let's record here. We'll hit record. Dan's going to speak. This is a sample voiceover being performed from a remote location and recorded locally. There we go. We've got Dan's take. So now if I wanted my talent to hear that, I would take this and drag it down to one of the playback tracks below. And if I hit play, we're going to see in the mixer view, we're going to see the meter here in playback one, and we're going to see it on the master fader, which means that it's touching this send plugin and going back to my talent so that they can listen to what they've recorded. This is a sample voiceover being performed from a remote location and recorded locally. Okay. There's a little bit of echo going on in here because my microphone's open, but um, hopefully in my edit after this video, we'll have gotten rid of that. Um, so this is a typical ADR type session that we would set up in Session Wire. Again, uh, this track right here is solely for recording the incoming audio. And all of these are for playing back any audio in the session to the artist. You can add more tracks into this if you want, if you've got some um, other voice actors that have already recorded their parts, or you've got music, or you've got slates that you want to put in here. They would all end up routed to this master fader, therefore allowing the talent to hear that. Uh, so that's how we set up a, a local recording session in Pro Tools to record a remote voice into your DAW. Uh, the principles, again, carry over to any DAW. They carry over to other workflows, uh, other use cases like podcasting, um, obviously ADR, voiceover, even remote overdubs with instruments if I had a guitar player that wanted to play along with this. Now, there is a caveat to that when it comes to music and recording metronomically accurate or metronomically gridded parts, um, you're going to have to take the latency of the internet into account. So for that reason, we recommend recording any music overdubs on the performing side of a session wire session. However, uh, for anything that's not metronomically important, like uh, voiceovers, again, podcasting, um, any kind of speaking, this is a great way to uh, record your client without having them to do a bunch of heavy lifting on their side. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, how you set up to record a remote person into Pro Tools. Be sure to give us a like and a follow. We'll be doing more of these videos down the road. If you want to see any specific kind of walkthroughs or tutorials, please let us know in the comments or send us an email at info at sessionwire.com. We'll see you next time.